What's up, all you good fellow fly guys? You know who it is, the cat in the hat, your resident fly guy, your chief architect, Michael Andrew of StyleArchitects.com, here to help you redesign your frame of mind when it comes to the styling thing. And welcome to another discourse and dress, some expressions for your ensemble, and some sonnets for your style. Today, we are going to be wrapping up our conversation with the covering that is the trench coat. Now, if you've been following us previously throughout the week, then you understand the different color dynamics, what you think about when it comes to your trench coat, how to incorporate that into your wardrobe, and what's trending with the jacket itself. Now, I wanted to make sure that I wrapped up the conversation on trenches with a brief history as well as the uh, construction and all of the different types of dynamics that go into creating a trench coat. Now again, with the history, this is gonna be a very concise and summarized version of the history, but if you want something more in depth, but then by all means, leave me some comments in the comment box and I'll definitely make sure that I come back to that history at a later video. And, and when it comes to the construction of the different elements of the trench coat, I don't want you to be super pressed to thinking that you need to have everything uh, that these components are comprised of. When it comes to a trench coat, a lot of things have changed, so you don't have to be uh, a purist when it comes to those things. Now, if you are, there's nothing wrong with that. This will just help you in the understanding of all the different components that you need in that space. But before we even get to that, I wanted to give you a quick story to provide some context for your clothing when we I was talking to you earlier this week about the different elements of the trench coat and while a lot of guys don't really think that they need it anymore I was telling you that it's partly because when you're going from your garage you're going to your car to the workplace you really don't find yourself exposed to the elements that much but there are situations that are going to require you to be out in the weather. And this happened to me a few days ago. I was going to an event and I checked the weather and it was not really supposed to rain. It was I think a 30 to 40% chance of rain. And as I was driving to the event, the clouds uh, seemed to get a lot darker and I found myself in a downpour. Now, luckily for me, uh, with the time that it took for me to find parking and then for me to get to the event, I was able to maneuver through the downpour to a lighter raindrop. So I still did get wet, but I wasn't drenched coming into the space and was quickly able to dry off. But there was a guy after me who uh, was coming in probably about five or ten minutes after I did, and I guess the rain had picked back up, and he was soaked. It was just... It was a shame and he was walking up the stairs and I saw his shoulders slumped his head down and he just looked deflated and he only had on a dress shirt as well as a pair of pants and some shoes so the dress shirt that he had on was a aqua blue and it was completely soaked and it was exposing his undershirt his white undershirt uh, under it now this guy had to run to a corner he went and got some paper towels and was trying to you know dry himself off but he looked around and seemed to be not only uncomfortable, but unwilling to network in those different types of spaces. And I can't say that I blamed him. I wouldn't have moved around in that space as well until I dried off. But it made me think about how he was going to move afterwards. Because these people had seen him come in, they saw his demeanor and they saw his energy. And it made me wonder if they would be as willing to interact with that type of energy or that type of person uh, throughout the rest of the evening. Now, if you're the guy who doesn't really get phased by any type of situation, you still may be able to maneuver in those spaces. But for that guy, as most guys, part of their presentation or their confidence comes from their presentation and their image. And so it showed me very quickly how the effects of our image not only impact others, but they also impact ourselves. So I do want you to try that on and see how it fits you. And before you are hesitant to go get a trench coat or a covering, think about the fact that you could find yourself exposed. So with that being said, we're going to jump into the history of the trench coat 
and I do want to let you know that I actually learned a lot when it came to the trench coat because I actually thought that the trench coat had its origins in the military as most of modern day menswear actually has found itself. So um, take this on again this is going to be a very uh, concise summarized version of it and if you do want some more uh, information please go ahead and leave me those comments. Now in the 1800s uh, the great coat was a very fashionable item for men to wear. Uh, it was the covering for men's frocks. So if they were going to an event, they would put on their great coat and then remove it once they got to the uh, venue that they were going to. But it was a wool piece. It could be a little bit heavy and it could be cumbersome and uncomfortable in warm winter months. In the 1800s, gas lighting was becoming more prevalent as well. And one of the ways that you could create gas lighting was through coal. And because of that, there was a gentleman who was an industrialist named James Syme, and he was creating gas through coal. What ended up happening was he discovered that he could dissolve rubber in the process of creating that gas. So he took that to his friend, you know, to an associate, Charles McIntosh, who was in the clothing business, and Charles McIntosh began to uh, play with that uh, different type of treatment. So Charles McIntosh began playing with that whole concept and discovered that if you put it between two layers of cloth, he could create rain resistant clothing and hence the beginning of the trench coat. So as most great uh, advances in style or innovation um, happened, the first trench coat was unsuccessful despite selling quite a few pieces because of its functionality. First, it's important to understand that rubber, when it's heated, has a very foul smell. So if you had that rubber trench coat on, it didn't really smell the best and wasn't that pleasant. The fit was never going to uh, accentuate any of the looks of the rest of the other coats. And then on top of that, uh, from a functionality standpoint, when it got hot, the rubber would begin to melt and become very, very sticky, which would create adhesive on the clothing and would uh, damage that. And then in the cold, what would end up happening is, is it would become very stiff and rigid, which made it essentially unwearable uh, for the wearer there. So because of that, there was a lot of things that didn't really work there and it began to fall out of favor um, in that time period. The trench coat really actually began to gain its prominence and traction around World War I. And this happened because a lot of people in the British Guard needed to have the covering when they were moving throughout different spaces and were being caught in the elements. And all of these different aspects of the components that create the trench coat actually have function. One of the things that you'll see on a trench coat is a D-ring belt with different, um, different hooks and those were actually so that men could store their swords, they could store maps, and some people have said that they would store their grenades there. I don't think that that would have worked after the first person did and that clip came out. I'm just saying, I don't think that that would be the smartest place to put your grenades, but there's a possibility that that's where they went as well. And the reason why trench coat derived its name was essentially because the trench coat was worn for the guys who were in the trenches and so because they had to deal with the mud they had to deal with the rain all those different types of things they were in the trenches and they were wearing their coats hence the name the trench coat so uh there are numerous other elements and even theories when it comes to the origins of the trench coat i won't go into those there because uh, i'm on a limited amount of time uh but uh, if you are interested in a more concise uh, understanding of the history of the trench coat, please by all means leave me some comments in the comment box and I will definitely provide you with that.